Uh, okay. So thank you for coming um, back. Yes. Okay. So let let's begin. Um, so yesterday I I talked about uh, kind of this. Um, uh, I focused on the I guess on the equation side of things. So let me rewrite the equation that we're that we're going to be interested in. Um, so and I'll keep it up here for for a little while. So to remind you, um, uh, partial T minus L was uh, uh, some parabolic operator. Um, U is going to be a function or in general distribution from RD into R. Uh, psi is similarly uh, a function or distribution. And, uh, and F is a smooth function of the jet of, of U and, and of Xi. Um, so, uh, um, uh, so actually, uh, let me maybe make a make a small uh, addition before before I get into uh, into further details. Um, so uh, maybe in contrast to to what uh, so something that uh, Lorenzo spoke about. So nothing that I'll be presenting is somehow new. Uh, that's uh, is either recently up on the archive or uh, or or will be soon up on the archive. Uh, so the references that I'm mostly going to be following are. Um, Martin's uh, original paper from, from 2014. So this will be the, um, uh, at least for, for today and the and probably part of, uh, uh, well, actually, yeah, uh, we have two lectures today, so I'll probably speak about that. Um, you, you said a lot for these two lectures. Um, there is another paper by uh, Ivan Brunet, uh, Martin, and, uh, and Lorenzo Zambotti. So I'm speaking more about, uh, so actually I am speaking more about Lorenzo's papers, like he spoke about his, so <laughs> we're continuing this trend. Uh, so this is from, uh, from 2019, although I guess it appeared in the archive in 2016. Um, uh, and uh, for the final part, which um, I might not get to because, so yesterday I prepared about 500 and, um, uh, pages and I got through three of them. Today I have 10, so I'm assuming I'll get through six of them and that will give me <laughs> only enough time to finish them uh, in, uh, tomorrow. But maybe I will briefly mention, um, uh, so this is, this is for what I called positive and negative renormalization yesterday. So this the theory was developed in, in these two papers. Um, and for positive renormalization, I'll mostly follow Martin's original paper with some, with well, quite a few ideas borrowed from, uh, for, borrowed from this paper. And uh, for the final one, I'll speak about the paper of um, uh, Ivan uh, A.J. Chandra, um, um, myself, and, uh, and uh, Martin. And so this was, uh, I think, published actually only this year, but again, up on the archive, I think, 2017. So yeah, so none of these are relatively recent works. So, so these are, um, uh, they've been around for a little while. Uh, but I want to present, uh, so yesterday I, I, I waved my hands a lot and gave, gave quite a bit of motivation. Um, uh, so today I'll focus much more on, on some of the details. And so, so these are the, the concrete algebraic structures that appear. Um, so if you, if you didn't follow any of this stuff with young products, uh, Young's product theorems and power counting from yesterday, uh, if something didn't make sense, then um, maybe you can, you can safely tune in today. <laughs> if you missed the yesterday's lecture, I'll, I'll virtually use nothing from it today. Um, so, you, so you can safely, uh, safely tune in again. Um, uh, uh, yes, so I think that's, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, okay, so, um, so uh, let me begin by, um, uh, so uh, let me call this kind of a section rules and trees. Maybe I'll finish this section even in this lecture. Maybe not. Um, so, uh, so I want to give a systematic way of defining some of the objects that Lorenzo was speaking about in his previous um, in his previous lecture. So he had uh, these objects pi and gamma. Um, and they were indexed with i and j for i between one and n. So you might wonder, well, what's a natural way of actually building up this index set um, n? Or, or, 
or what, what do the I's and, uh, and the J's correspond to? Um, uh, so, in, in, the, in the particular case when you want to address an equation of, of, of this type. So, uh, the, the idea is that we're going to rewrite the, the equation mild formulation. So, let's, let's rewrite, um, so I'm going to use exactly the same notation as before. So, G is the Green's function for the, this parabolic operator. Um, we write it as f of u and psi um, plus some initial condition term. So, uh, so the idea is that uh, you uh, there's several ways of building up trees actually from this uh, for, 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 from this object, um, or or to see how how at least how trees appear. So, for example, you might want to run Picard iterations. So, you you set up a, a fixed you set up a map. Uh, which maps u into the into the well into this right hand side, uh, and then you start u is equal to say from zero, and you get your Picard iterants, and hopefully they converge. And then the idea is that well, you might want to express each one of those Picard iterants as um, as a function of the noise and the initial condition. And so you can do that say by formally Taylor expanding f. In fact, think of f as being a polynomial at this stage. So then if f is a polynomial, you can actually uh, express each one of those Picard iterants as a, as a finite sum of multilinear functions of, of, of the noise and of the, of the initial condition. So well, one of those terms might be something like g convolved with, uh, I don't know, like uh, g of u naught times uh, g convolved with maybe the second derivative of the noise, maybe u squared this guy, and maybe you multiply by the noise again, or something like this. So this is an, an example of, of one of the functions that might appear uh, for a particular choice of f. So I've written here u and psi, but it's just to save, uh, uh, save space. So it's a, it could be a function of the entire jet. Um, okay, so uh, what we're going to do is going to construct a, um, a set of, uh, of formal symbols, which are going to be placeholders for these functions. And uh, we, we kind of want to uh, we kind of want to do that in order to uh, well I guess it might it might become a little bit clear later why we want to do that but it's sort of to to disentangle what the, the uh, kind of a formal fixed point uh, of of this type with with the concrete functions that these these objects are supposed to represent so um, okay so let me maybe start on even on, on a new on a new board. So, so I apologize. The first, uh, uh, quite a lot of these things will be uh, will be mostly at the beginning, just definitions before I get to concrete results. But sometimes a good definition is worth a thousand results. So, uh, so maybe uh, uh, this is this is quite important. So, we define a set of symbols. I'm going to call T of n inductively. So T of zero is just the empty set. So it contains no symbols. And then T of N is, um, is equal to symbols of the following type. Uh, I is equal to one up until L. I Where okay, so the symbols are, are products of this type, where k is uh, so where where k, q i, and p j, they're multi indices. So yes, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe slides would have been good for this actually because it's it's hard to. So this is a q. Is the Q okay or, yeah, because it's a triple sub, uh, sub index, so. Okay, so, yes, so it's an I, I and the J here, and there's a sum over I and a sum over J. I hope, hope that's visible. Sorry? Sorry, yeah, sorry, the, 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 pro the products are over I and J, yes, 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 yes. 
Oh, uh, w one more admin thing that I maybe sh should have mentioned at the beginning. So uh, uh, the, the, the lecture notes are, as I mentioned yesterday, they're up on my webpage. I fixed uh, some typos that there were from yesterday, which, uh, um, uh, so if, if, you, if you did see the lecture notes yesterday and something didn't make sense at all, it's because it didn't make sense. And, uh, and hopefully now it makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> if not, then, then any, any spotting of typos would be very helpful. Um, okay, and so, and then the tau, tau j, these are everything that appeared in the previous level. And the L and the M are just arbitrary positive numbers. And I think that's, uh, that's everything. And then, um, um, and then you add everything that you saw in the previous level. Uh, okay, so, uh, and then finally we define, uh, we define uh, uh, the, the big T to be the union of all of these guys. Okay, so each one of these guys is just a, a formal symbol. These products are commutative, so we don't care about the order in which they appear. And uh, what you should think about these indices uh, K as, so this X to the K uh, should represent a polynomial. It's the same polynomials that we saw in, in, the, in the previous lecture. And they kind of represent uh, Taylor, think of them as perhaps representing Taylor, the Taylor jet of this, uh, this initial, con the propagation of the initial condition harmonic extension of the initial condition. Um, so maybe they would appear in terms like this. And then think of, um, think of uh, this Xi QI and the IPJ as being uh, the QI derivative of the noise and the PJ derivative of, of, of the heat kernel. And when you, when you see an I hitting a, hitting a tree, think of this as convolution with the Green's function with an appropriate derivative. I will, uh, when I speak about uh, admissible maps, I will, uh, I will discuss this. Um, so uh, a remark is that every, every tau in, in the set of symbols has an exp expression as a tree. Um, so specifically it's a rooted combinatorial decorated tree we write it as tau is equal to T N E, where <clears throat> the definition goes inductively. So we start at the root, which we call a row. Um, to row, we attach a, 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 a decoration. So, so this is X to the, to the, to the K. Um, and, uh, and then there are going to be a bunch of edges leaving the root. So each one of these edges, which are terminal, so there's, there's, they end only on a single, single edge. These are going to be these um, noise, uh, noise terms. So Q1 up until psi Q, QL. And uh, each one of these edges that perhaps attaches to other parts of the tree, this is going to be uh, I P1 up until I P J. So, uh, and then each one of these trees is, uh, is just the tree given by uh, the tree that appeared uh, for, 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 for the tiles. And then each, so these attach to the roots of these, of these trees, tau one to tau n. Okay, so concretely n, so what I've written n and e here, n is a map from the set of nodes for the tree t into n to the d, and we usually call them polynomial decorations or, or node decorations, that's why it's, uh, why it's an n. Uh, and e uh, is a map from the edge set of, of t um, into, uh, uh, what we call E, where E is defined to be L times ND. 
and uh, L uh, is, has nothing to do with that uh, with that uh, elliptic operator L. It's the um, it's the set of two symbols, which is the noise and the um, uh, the symbol I. So this we call set of types, and this is called uh, um, edge types. Because uh, so um, to each edge we 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 attach an edge type. And to every node, we attach one of these node declarations. Oh, no, node declaration. Okay. So, I was gonna speak about this a little bit later, but I think it might be good even to present this now. So given Given a smooth uh, object, so we're going to smooth this. This guy is a smooth function. We can define a map capital pi, uh, which goes from this set of, of trees into uh, smooth uh, smooth maps, and uh, we define it uh, in, in, in inductively. So. Um, so pi of, uh, so there are s several properties uh, um, which, uh, which will determine it. So every time I see a symbol, symbol psi, this is going to be just, just a noise. Every time I see um, uh, a symbol which is x to the k, um, so x to the k, by the way, is just the, the tree, so x to the k according to this convention is just a single tree with a single nose dec decoration, which is k. Um, this is going to be the polynomial, so if at x, this is the polynomial of x to the k. Um, and then uh, we define it uh, uh, multiplicatively, so if I have two symbols tau and sigma, then this is going to be pi tau and pi sigma. Um, if I have, uh, um, so and then what I need to, the, the last two things I need to tell you is what to do with, um, so if I see an I of, uh, of, a, of a tree tau, um, then this is going to be a K convolved with, um, with pi of, of tau. And think of K as, uh, so K is, um, is at this stage in, actually an, an arbitrary kernel, um, of sufficient uh, integrability, so it's uh, let's say that it goes from the unit ball uh, minus minus zero into into R. So it's a, in fact, it's a, it's, a, it's a smooth function on on the set, uh, which is which is integrable. So so this is actually exactly the k that that appeared in in, in Lorenzo's talk before. Right. Yes. Um. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what this is called rules, actually, but p perhaps. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so may maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so think of this as some localized version of the Green's function associated to the parabolic operator. So it's a, think of it, maybe it agrees with the Green's function in the ball of radius one half. Okay, so, so this is now, in particular, this is another smooth object. Okay, and then uh, and then i of uh, of q of tau is uh, is just given by the cube derivative of uh, of i of uh, of i of tau, um, and uh, actually here I, at this stage I can even um, oh, uh, okay with the, with the way that I've set things up actually I need uh, I need maybe to consider. Um, I wanted this to also include the. Let me and, and maybe add one more one more point here. So i of p, i of psi of p is the cube derivative of the of the noise. Okay, yeah, okay, I could have actually included that as a, in, in one case in the final one, but okay, perhaps this is clear anyway. Okay, so 
with these with these rules, I can inductively extend uh, capital pi to all uh, to, to every tree. So indeed, if I ever see a product of this type, like like here, it's just going to extend multiplicatively over everything uh, because of this uh, third uh, third property. Uh, and then I know how to define each one of the each 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 term in the product because of the other rules. And then uh, and then I, I eventually reach reached kind of the terminal the terminal edges, or or I reach these these so-called noise uh, noise edges, and then I know how to define them as well, uh, along with the polynomials. Yes, yes. So this 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 is here. So if I see. Um, so if I see an index Q, I push it outside and the derivative, and I just pick up. Uh, so I could have, could have put it, put the Q here, for example. The, an equivalent thing would have been to put a Q here and put a DQ over here, and then and then I, I wouldn't need, I, I wouldn't need this line anymore. Okay. Yes. Yes. So uh, yeah, okay. So that's uh, that's a good question. Uh, that's a good good point. Um, so yes, yes. So uh, I'm using a, a shorthand here that I have not explained. Um, so that's a very good comment. So uh, I use so notation. I should have said this right after I introduced these symbols. So I, without a decoration, is uh, is I of zero. Um, so this is uh, l l l like that, where, where zero is the zero multi-index. Um, so uh, my, by the way, my my natural numbers begin at zero. So I, I, I know there's a war about whether they they begin at zero or one. So I'm on I'm on I'm on, my, I'm on that side of the battle. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, so. The root, no, the root is a vertex. So. Ah, uh, so that, that's also a zero, a zero decoration. Yeah, yeah, so, so. Yeah, so that's the convention, yeah. So, so if, if, if you have a like zero, this is like a, a zero, zero decoration, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So these these are all very good questions. Yeah. So which I, I did not uh, I did not explain very well. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So you, you can. So the, the operator. So I I of this tree, for example. Let me grab a different color. So these kind of combinatorial rules, I think, are quite important to uh, to kind of get familiar with. Um, so I I of of this tree tau. Would essentially uh, attach an edge to the to the root. Um, the this would now become the row, so so you would no longer have the have the root here. So the the row is always going to be the root, and the edge decoration just becomes so the polynomial decoration just becomes zero. But if I were to multiply this guy, for example, by x to the k, then I would get a new symbol in my in my. I mean, this is already a new symbol. It's just the x to the k is um, is, is is one. So. Sometimes we call this just just one. Um, then then I would attach a, a, a put a, a k a k no no decoration over there. Okay, does that roughly make sense? Okay, great. Okay, so. Um, uh, okay, so this is these abstract symbols are going to represent these these functions. Uh, the, okay, you, you might think, okay, why why on earth would I bother introducing this set of symbols when I can just introduce you know, one uh, kind of one 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 function? The point is that later on we're going to change. So as a as a as a foreshadowing of things to come, um, the objects that we'll ultimately construct or ultimately look at. Will satisfy all of these properties except for this uh, this this multiplicative property. And this, it's going to stop satisfying this multiplicative property um, because uh, in the end, 
pi is going to take values and distributions rather than smooth functions, and this, this product is going to be ill-defined. So we're going to have to change what uh, pi of tau sigma is. So this, this term here will, will ultimately change. And we want, to, want a way to just uh, keep track of, of, these, of these changes in process. Um, uh, okay, so uh, now I'm gonna narrow down the set uh, of trees, T, uh, significantly. So it turns out that uh, we only really wanna keep track of, of the trees that appear inside of, uh, inside of our formal um, uh, expansion for the, for the solution U. So for example, if, if the noise psi appears in an affine way without any derivatives um, in, the, in the equation, like it did for the, for the equations I, I presented in, my, in the previous lecture, uh, like the 5-4 the equation, um, then you're never going to see more than one instance of psi multiplied. So you're never gonna see like psi squared or something, or, or psi with a derivative even. So all of those trees that have more than one instance of psi attached to the root, uh, or anywhere actually, are gonna become uh, instant, uh, are gonna become uh, uh, not, 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 not helpful to us. So we're gonna narrow this down, and this is where uh, the, the word for rules comes in. Uh, I see why I asked about rules, because I put rules up there. So, <laughs> so, um, so uh, the definition of a rule that I'm gonna use here uh, is, uh, is a simplified version of the, of the general definition. Uh, so a rule uh, R, uh, well, let's see here. A rule is um, a subset of uh, N, N to the, of this set uh, of, uh, of edge types. Um, <coughs> Uh, yeah, so that's actually the, the definition. <laughs> um, um, so uh, just a remark, uh, think of a rule, and I'll use this in the notations later, uh, think of uh, R as um, uh, uh, a set of multi-sets, multi sets, multi sets, or multi-subsets, I don't know what the proper thing to call it is, of, of, of E. So it's, it's, uh, it's a set of, of multi-sets whose elements are, 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 are edge types. And, uh, and there's an obvious correspondence between functions from E into the natural numbers and, and these multi-sets. Um, okay, so, and then our rule is called uh, normal, uh, if, uh, so this is a definition of a rule. A rule is called normal if uh, M is a subset of N, and I'm thinking of M and N now as, as multi-sets here, and N belongs to R, um, then this implies that M also belongs to R. So it's closed under, under inclusions. Okay, and then we say that um, a tree uh, strongly conforms. I'm not going to uh, say what just to conform means. Uh, that's, a bit, that's strange that I define strongly conforms, but not what just conforms means, but this is just for consistency with terminology in the, in the literature. Um, uh, to R. If, um, so a tree tau, uh, let me, so that I don't write it out again. Um, <coughs> let me always uh, make a convention that whenever I write tau, I mean something of this type. So, so I'm going to use K, L, and the rest of the indices um, without specifying to denote the associated edges and polynomial decorations for, for tau. So if, uh, and now, so I'm gonna define n of tau 
be equal to um, the set of uh, the, the, the multi set of edge types leaving leaving the root. So, so this, this n is defined this way, this is a, a definition. And we say that a tree strongly co conforms to R if this multiset belongs to R. Continue the definition here, and uh, um, <coughs> and each tau one or each tau 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 j uh, also strongly conforms. Why? So. <coughs> So if, if I give you a bunch of, um, of trees tau 1 to tau j, which strongly conform to R, then uh, you, uh, um, you attach a bunch of, um, of, of edges to them, like, the, like these, these uh, with um, edge decorations IP1 to IPM, um, and attach and with the associated things with the, with the noises, um, then uh, this new, um, and it doesn't matter about the polynomial decoration at the root. This new tree will strongly con conform if and only if this uh, this element is a uh, this multi set is a, belongs to the rule R. Okay. Um, so uh, okay, so it's a bit mysterious, perhaps, how this. So this is actually a complete definition. <laughs> which is perhaps, uh, it looks circular because I need to tell you how the tau j's can conform to R, but uh, the, the kind of the remark that's, uh, that makes this argument not circular is that uh, xk, the tree with a single, with a single, uh, 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 um, single node and uh, polynomial decoration k, this always strongly conforms. to R. Yes, yes. Y yes, yes. Uh, so the tau j's for tau are the tau j's that appear in the tree of in Inside the tree, yeah, yeah. So this was this convention that I. Uh, that so if I ever specify tau, uh, I'm gonna inside, inside of the tree. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna specify this that the object over there. Yeah. Um, so a, a set. Uh, so the the M, because of this. Um, uh, uh, so uh, the stage. Um, Well, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, so so strongly conforms to R, okay, if R is, R is uh, normal and non-empty. That's the, uh, you, you, you need this assumption on R. On, on R. So, I mean, uh, I, either either this tree kind of uh, conforms to R or it doesn't. If it doesn't, then um, uh, then your set of trees that strongly conform is empty. <laughs> but, but if it does, then it's quite it's quite quite rich. Okay, so this definition kind of, even though it's it's seemingly circular, it actually tells you all the trees that strongly conform to a rule. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to denote by by T 
this little circle, um, uh, the subset of trees are strongly conforming to a subset of strongly conforming trees. Okay, so you might wonder, okay, how does this tie in with, with our, so I, I gave you a definition of a rule, how does it tie in with the original equation that I started off with? So uh, unlike, unlike Lorenzo, I always have the equation in the back of my mind. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 so um, this T is, uh, is T zero of R. So I, I think of a, this is in some sense part of uh, part of this um, uh, part of the definition. Okay, so um, so I have this uh, this equation that I, that I've written up here. What's the what's the motivation behind the rule? The motivation behind the rule is that uh, we can it allows us to eliminate trees that don't appear in the formal uh, ex expansion of the solution. So. Um, I'm not going to mention, so let me introduce the space of nonlinearities on trees. Uh, although I won't mention them uh, again for, for a long time, but it, I think it's, it's very motivational. So a nonlinearity um, is a, a smooth map. Uh, F. From uh, from R E into into R, uh, depending on only finitely many components. Uh, maybe actually, this final condition is not even necessary, but I'll include it for safety. On only finitely many components. And uh, <clears throat> we say that that um, F obeys a certain rule R. If there's some multi-index zero one uh, uh, O Omega dot O uh, O M uh, O N not clash with the notation up there. Um, so this is uh, this is I think of this as an element of uh, of N to the E. So each one of these each one of these guys are elements of of E. So I give you a, a multi set of edge types, and if this does not belong to uh, to R, then um, this should imply that the um, derivatives in in the respective directions of of F. So I differentiate. So this is a, a big. It's a it's an infinite dimensional space. But uh, the fact that F only depends on finitely many components, I can essentially just uh, uh, it's partial derivative with respect to the coordinates is is well defined. Uh, so these are all these these, these partial deriv derivatives with respect to the components of f. This should equal to zero. Okay, so let me give you an example. Um, so. Let me take the five, four, d minus one equations. So, um, so there's always a natural way to build a rule for a given nonlinearity. Uh, non and the only reason we speak about rules rather than the nonlinearity is that it's more convenient to uh, just kind of cut down the sizes of trees and speak about the, their algebraic and combinatorial properties when we have a rule in place rather than a, a nonlinearity. But apart from that, they're they're actually really I think virtually equivalent. 
um, at least for practical purposes. So we so remember the, the equation for for this was um, uh, I'll write it in again in mild formulation. It's G involved with marsh minus U cubed plus the noise uh, plus boundary data. So here the natural rule uh, R should be um, the, the notation is a it's a set of, of multisets. So it's uh, very frustrating to write all of this out. Uh, so you, um, the rule consists of all multisets, which I, I put now in, in circular brackets. Maybe I should put these guys actually in circular brackets as well, again for consistency. Um, where L is equal to zero, one, two, or three. Again, recall I'm using the the uh, that I has the has the subset zero here. <clears throat> uh, okay, so this is the, the the natural rule to define, and uh, uh, to specify which nonlinearity obeys this rule, I will go to a new board. Right, so uh, continuing with that example, um, uh, we define, uh, so then, um, then R is normal, satisfies the normality condition, uh, and uh, uh, the nonlinearity that obeys this is the natural one that you build from, from the equation. So F, um, uh, okay, I'm not even gonna write its argument, I'm just going to say that it's equal to I cubed Plus, plus psi. So the i is just the natural component of the um, of r to the e, which is associated with uh, uh, with the uh, edge type i, and same with the psi. And I cube the first one and I add the the one with psi. Uh, okay, so this this f obeys r. Yes, that also obeys the rule, yes, yeah. So does f of i plus xi, um, and in fact, so does p, p being equal to zero, one, two, and of course three. That also obeys the rule. Yes? Yeah, yeah, okay, so uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, it's the notation, yes, I, uh, I, I meant to clarify this. Um, so when I write something like this, I, so in square brackets, this is not, not part of the, the definition, this is kind of on the side. So I of L 
this is um, equal to I repetition of I where this happens L times. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so a, a, a rule, um, when you kind of set this up to actually solve an equation, you, you come up with your, uh, you have, you typically have an equation that you start with. Uh, then you come up with a rule such that this nonlinearity or the nonlinearity in that equation obeys the rule R. This rule actually gives you more. It actually allows you to solve, um, well, with the kind of the, 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 the setup that the rule will ultimately give you, it will allow you to solve a class of equations. A class of equations precisely have that nonlinearity which obey that rule. So in particular, you could solve uh, with this one single rule. Uh, if you set things up correctly, you'll be able to solve uh, not just phi four. Uh, by the way, the, I never actually said, but the phi four, uh, this, this should be thought of as three plus one, and this three is the same three that appears up here. So this is where the four comes from. <laughs> so it'll allow you to solve uh, not only phi four, but allow you to solve basically phi P for P less than or equal to four. Yes. 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 Yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's um, so this this I okay, maybe what would be clearer is if I. Um, so if I write f of, say, y, it's being equal to y of i cubed plus y of, uh, of psi cubed. Sorry, it's just psi. Where, where this y is now, this y is now an element of here and y index i is the associated real number. So y of i is now a real number, which um, is associated to here. Yeah, 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 sorry. Just being a bit, yeah, a bit, a bit lazy, yeah, okay. Thank you, yes. Yes, yeah. Uh, ah, that's the, that's the empty multiset, yeah. So the, the empty multi set inside of this um, inside of the edge sets, so or inside of n to the power of the edge sets would just be uh, the zero multi index. Uh, so the the empty multi set. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so it's, that's roughly the intuition behind it. If you can define a cube, you, you better be able to define a square. Um, but, uh, but it's also quite an important uh, assumption later on the algebraic side, because we're later going to ma start manipulating spaces of trees, and to make certain operations well-defined, uh, you will need, need to assume normality. It's an important algebraic assumption as well. Okay. Um, good, yeah, uh, uh, by the way, uh, all, all questions are, are welcome. It's a very nice, uh, <laughs> it's very nice when people ask. Uh, so is, is, is this, is the setup relatively clear? Yes. Yes, please. So, uh, 
So th that's a good question. Um, in this framework, no. Uh, in this framework that I'm going to, that I'm describing with rules and with the with the trees, if even if you have a system of equations, you would increase the the, the number of types. Um, both these kind of associated to kernels and associated to noises, but the number of polynomials would, would stay the same because you, you kind of want to treat a polynomials as just an analytic object and because you're working on one fixed Euclidean space, uh, that's just one, one polynomial. Uh, maybe to, uh, to deviate uh, a, a little bit, uh, l later on actually, um, not, uh, I, won't, I won't discuss this in, in, in these lectures, but actually in the final paper that, that I mentioned where we discuss renormalization of SPDs, uh, there it actually becomes very important to keep track of uh, the polynomials that came from different systems. So there we actually enlarge the space of trees and we do uh, keep track of the polynomials. So in, in short, to answer your question, yes, that construction is very helpful for certain things. But, but for this purpose, we don't. We, we wouldn't need it even with uh, to to set up the regularity structure. Somehow, we wouldn't need it. Yes. Um. <coughs> uh, so. Uh, um, So I guess I guess actually the, that question is what I, I, I'm trying to perhaps illustrate with this example here. So it's um, in some sense it's uh, so that there is a, an algorithmic way of, of doing it. Uh, you would you would kind of essentially um, so uh, okay. Let me present one more example. Maybe it'll it'll become it'll become clear. <laughs> um, so let's look at an example which is um, uh, so it's called the generalized KPZ. Um, so this equation looks like u, g convolved with, then it has a bunch of things. So f of u plus g of u partial x u squared plus, um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll try the, oh yeah, okay, fine. h of u times, uh, times psi, okay. I will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will write it like this, plus for, again, for consistency with, with literature, my own lecture notes. Um, so let's consider an equation of this type. So there's, um, there are four functions, so f, g, h, and k, f, g, h, and k are smooth functions, based on R. Um, uh, you, so we're working, um, uh, we're working on, on, on say, two-dimensional space. So, so our, our D in this case, okay, our D is equal to two. Uh, uh, yeah, and I guess that's it. And this partial X is, is the, uh, so we, we think of one direction as time, one direction as space, and this is the spatial derivative. So, okay, so for this one, it's uh, perhaps less clear how to come up with, 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 with the rule. Uh, so what you would do is, is you would you would look at this at this right hand side, and you go, um, well, I see uh, a bunch of so if say f is a polynomial, so think of a smooth function as a polynomial of arbitrary degree, and I'll go, okay, so to describe f of u, I need arbitrary products of u. So I better so uh, um, uh, I better include so if, for example, if I expand uh, if I have my Picard iteration. Uh, if I run my Picard iteration once, I see g convolved with psi, so I better be able to describe f of g convolved with psi. And g convolved with psi is something like i of, of a symbol tau, where tau is, uh, is a, a tree with a single edge um, uh, with, a, with a noise calculation. So <clears throat> the rule that we're going to define here, so I want arbitrary many products of, of f of u, so I'm going to include um, uh, I of, uh, of L inside my, um, uh, inside uh, um, my nonlinearity. So here I will, um, uh, L is going to be uh, an arbitrary positive number. And I use the same notation as before. Um, I of one, so 
by one is uh, is the um, is the edge type where the kind of the the multi index uh, inside of ND is just the kind of uh, the the, uh, the single number associated to the first direction. Okay. And sometimes this is called E1 or something like this. Okay, and then this is going to be an M. And I want to include this in the same, so this is one big, the square brackets are one big multi set. And this, this M here, I'm going to pick it to be 0, 1, or 2. So maybe not really m is equal to zero, one, or two. That should be empty now. Everything, um, and I want to include this i of one here because I see a derivative here with respect to x. So I'm thinking of my direct spatial direction one as, as um, my direction one in, in, in r r two as, as 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 being the x component as, as being the x direction. I want to include this guy in here because. Uh, I see a product here uh, with a, with a derivative of u. So effectively, the the rules that strongly conform to to this current rule, I'm going to add one more thing in a second, are all all trees that um, so the trees that strongly conform to R have uh, uh, two decorations. I won't count those squiggles. Two edges at, at most two edges, which have an I one attached to them. And then they have arbitrary many edges, all with i attached to them. Okay, so I, I allow my trees at the root to look like this. And the, the, the idea is that these two edges, the fact that I have at most two with, a, with an edge decoration i1, corresponds to that, the fact that I have at most a square here. And the fact that I allow arbitrary many, many of the other ones is the fact that I have a smooth function g here. So I can, I can have an arbitrary large polynomial, say, here, and multiply these guys. Um, right, and then I need to add one more set uh, in order for the nonlinearity, the natural nonlinearity to be, uh, to obey this. And this is going to be, um, again, um, uh, the multiset with, um, with arbitrary many i's and one instance of the of the noise. So I also allow trees that look like this. So one, at most one, one of the size, and then arbitrary many uh, edges with an i decoration. And then I allow, I allow of course trees to be on here as well, like this. But not here. So trees of this type would strongly conform to the rule. And the, the natural nonlinearity then, so then R is normal. So we can check that it's closed under, under yes. Yes. Exactly, yes. The fact that M is allowed to be one. Yes, yes, exactly. So R is normal. Um, and uh, uh, the nonlinearity, which is f, okay. And let me now use my my clarified notation up here. So it's maybe a little bit a uh, little bit longer. Um, this is i of f of i plus g of y of i uh, times uh, y of i one squared so plus h of y. Y of one plus K of Y of I times Y of Psi. You can see why I didn't want to write the Ys because it's uh, just a, a bookkeeping device. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, okay. So all uh, right. So and I so this this I should finish my sentence. This F obeys R. Yes. Are irrelevant. 
Yeah, yeah. In fact, F and G and H and K could themselves just be polynomials, say of degree three. And in this case, um, I could have restricted my L to being less than or equal to three. That would have been a perfectly fine thing to do. Um, uh, but uh, uh, sort of by, by chucking uh, everything of this type into, into R, I'm allowed to solve all equations simultaneously, uh, where F, G, H, K and could, don't have to necessarily be just polynomials. <laughs> when, when did I start? Uh, uh, oh, I started the quarter past, yes, okay. Uh, so this is, um, uh, <laughs> yes, so this is probably a good place to, to, to stop. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, 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 well, I'll, I'll do more later. No, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, so thank you. <laughs>